let's uh, let's start with the uh, talking about the, the lecture plan of uh, space flight attendance control. Uh, make sure you are registered uh, uh, to uh, EAS four eight one three. Uh, it's elective, uh, so I presume that you have already done uh, your space mechanics, uh, your satellite technology, uh, and uh, uh, launch technology as well. So I think uh, it will be much easier for you to follow this uh, lecture. Uh, I presume there is also a time prerequisite that you will need to uh, comply before you can register. Okay, uh, uh, since you have been exposed to uh, satellite technology, you have been exposed to space mechanics, uh, this is going to actually uh, be an extension to uh, those two subjects actually. Looking into specifically on uh, spacecraft and its control, which means that uh, it is slightly on looking how basically we can ensure a rigid body that is flying in Earth, Earth orbit mission uh, can comply and can serve the mission uh, successfully and to keep that uh, spacecraft flying. This spacecraft can be a uh, space shuttle, uh, can be even uh, a satellite as simple as that. But most of the exercises that you will see here uh, in the subject go out uh, will be uh, uh, satellite as a good example. Um, 14 weeks all in uh, we planned for this lecture. Uh, more importantly, I think uh, since this is an elective subject, uh, there is a bit of revision that I, I may want to do. Maybe I will take about an hour or and a half hours to do a revision on uh, uh, space mechanics, just a general overview, so that uh, assuming that there are some other, uh, well, I think students are interested to see in this class. Uh, they know what they are uh, recommending. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing is that it will be a, a, a quick revision uh, and it will be a, a very good comparison uh, what is uh, space mechanics subjects currently and where we are standing in terms of the space programs control so that you can link them together. Uh, they are close, they are similar, but they are absolutely not the same. But the knowledge of uh, both is, is very important because. Uh, you need to operate the spacecraft in its orbit. So when, when you look at the orbit, then you need to define the orbit. Then you fall back to the uh, space mechanics. Then if you want to fly in the orbit, then you have to actually go back to the spacecraft and its control. So this is a very, very important, uh, I would say, relation that you must establish and must understand very, very uh, clearly uh, what kind of uh, motion that we are going to be in this uh, subject or be in this subject. Uh, we will start off with the uh, attitude. Uh, how we can uh, represent attitude uh, to simply define what is attitude. Uh, for those who have uh, done uh, uh, flight uh, dynamics, I'm pretty sure it will be very, very, uh, I would say, useful in, to help you to understand even better uh, what is basically a satellite uh, attitude or even spacecraft attitude because it's very it's the same. Uh, it's the same, but not uh, our conventions are different, our flight path is different. Uh, but the definitions or rather the, the actual quantity is uh, similar. Uh, we will define that clearly and I would like to take maybe the opportunity uh, while defining the actual representation, uh, I will take the opportunity to introduce a bit on the uh, space mechanics just to, uh, you know, to, to quickly uh, to revise some uh, important items. Uh, then the most important uh, thing is that to establish the rigid body dynamics. Now, uh, in uh, satellite technology, uh, we have seen all those subsystems and we have uh, established all those subsystems, which is very, very important to ensure a uh, successful flight in space. But we didn't uh, talk much about the dynamics of the spacecraft itself or the dynamics of the satellite itself. Now, here, that's why we need to actually start uh, looking into the dynamics of the rigid body in space. So we have to establish that. Once that is established, then uh, uh, we can work with its, uh, its kinematics. Now, as uh, all of us know, kinematics basically involves when the motion, when you, uh, things involve motion, then we talk about kinematics. When you have a static condition, then you just talk about the transformation. Right? The transformation you have done uh, in your space mechanics, all those transformation, coordinate transformation, etc., you have done in space mechanics. Uh, here, we don't talk much about transformation. There will be very, very uh, 
uh, almost zero transformation, but there will be a kind of full of kinematics because it's motion. There will be a, a, a very precise projection uh, that I will explain in time comes when we want to establish an uh, equation of motion. So, three are components in space is important, transformation is important, we have learned in space mechanics, and here you are going to actually uh, do kinematics and then uh, later a bit on uh, projection. It's a very simple one uh, to say. Uh, after that, uh, when the dynamics is, uh, when the rigid body dynamics is established, we know that how this rigid body is going to stay and react in the space. If the, the condition is ideal, whatever that we have planned, obviously you will respect that and will stay just like what we have calculated. But unfortunately, it's not. As we have also seen in the space mechanics, there is a lot of uh, optical conditions. If uh, your ideal optic can be disturbed by environment, why can't your spacecraft or satellite can be disturbed? Definitely be disturbed. Therefore, the same disturbance are acting on the optic differently. The same disturbance are acting on the spacecraft differently. But the fact remains that they are influencing and that needs to be addressed carefully. Okay? Otherwise, we would not navigate or rather we would not apply in the ideal object. So, environmental effects that we need to know what are the important ones and we need to quantify it. We have to calculate that. If you cannot calculate that, then you, 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 don't, uh, uh, you don't end up actually rejecting it. Remember all the equations that you calculated in optical mechanics, all that you have quantified and you know how to reject those kind of uh, perturbations. So here, you will know how to calculate and basically how to reject them so that you will be in an ideal trajectory. Then comes our active control method. Now, I'm not going to uh, expose you a lot on control systems. It is going to be a short review of control system and then straight embark on the application. The application is a spacecraft. As a spacecraft, then we want to apply control system. But I, I expect uh, that all of you, uh, if you can remember, it's good, but if you don't, please revise your control system because a lot of, uh, I think, uh, components will be reused uh, in our discussion, which I, I may not want to start all over again. So it is important to, to revise control system, have that all in mind. Uh, we will address all these uh, control, uh, control, uh, control methods. So as you can see, this is a quite a lengthy uh, week, basically almost about a month we are going to uh, dwell, or rather more than, more than a month, uh, a month plus. Uh, we will uh, dwell on, uh, on active control system because there are various types of control that you have. There are various control systems that you have in, uh, yeah, in, in the test lab. So we want to see, we want to quantify it and then see how we can design it. We want to design a, not a complex one, we want to design a very simple one so that you know how basically to control a, a satellite or a spacecraft in its orbit. How to control this, a simple design maybe. Okay, this is important uh, for us to understand. And then uh, uh, followed by basically orbit control method. Now, uh, I have also uh, mentioned to you, we have done that orbit perturbations and we have identified the quantity which is going to disturb the orbit, but we haven't discussed in space mechanics the way that we are going to do the orbit control. No, we didn't do that. To this subject, I have added that component just uh, a topic just to tell you to complete the whole process. After knowing that, you may know how basically I'm going to do body control. Based on the requirement of space mechanics, I need to do orbit control. Okay? Orbit control comes in because of the space mechanics requirement, because we are not staying in that ideal Keplerian orbit. It's disturbed. So we need to actually bring back the ideal Keplerian orbit. So what we do? Well, there's a lot of uh, techniques. So we will actually expose to that. And how we can do that? That is important. Then comes uh, attitude determination. Now, if you have studied control system, I uh, also show afterwards uh, uh, in the introduction. Control system, when you have a control system, obviously you will have the controller, 
That's why you have been exposed to all the control systems that you have. You have the controller type, then you have plant, then in order basically to control the plant, it can be anything, it can be car, it can be uh, spacecraft, it can be uh, aircraft, you need to also measure. That's where active determination comes in. So in space there are methods of active determination. So we will actually look at the methods of active determination, the principle of it. Now, uh, I must tell you that active determination itself can be one whole subject matter. Just like the spacecraft dynamics and control, but if you look at active determination, the whole subject, there will be a small portion they will teach you how to control a spacecraft. So likewise here, we have uh, spacecraft control, a dynamics control, so we will teach you also a portion how you can measure that is important. Okay. Uh, now let's go to the rule of the game. Uh, attendance is important, as uh, as you have uh, known in your space mechanics uh, and uh, also your uh, rocket, uh, uh, one critical system, rocket system. Uh, attendance is important, and although I think most of the time uh, the lectures are going to be virtual, but nevertheless uh, we can monitor the attendance. Uh, your appearance in the slots of your classes, uh, your attendance can be monitored uh, online. So uh, we are going to pick your attendance and then I'm going to mark your attendance. So make sure that uh, well, you come to the virtual class without missing. That's five percent. It's a lot. Okay. Uh, thereafter, the exercises fifty percent. Uh, we may want to do the uh, group exercises, uh, depending on how many of you. Uh, I think it's going to be a uh, six collective, it may be a smaller group. Uh, we will actually look at the group and then we will decide to do the uh, group uh, grouping. Uh, then, uh, evaluation, further evaluation, we test on test and uh, project test could be an uh, open loop test, it could be a take loop test. Let's see how things develop. And there will be a project paper uh, for each, uh, each one of you. Uh, that, let, me, let, me, uh, uh, let us see whether uh, how we can actually do this. Uh, the implementation. Uh, we can actually uh, start establishing when we are progressing. Uh, that would be 15%. So, that all in all, the review was 60%, and inevitably, your final exam will be 40%. And um, there are chances of uh, we are doing it face to face. Uh, if it's not possible, then we can still do it uh, online. Uh, that is also is not uh, you know, a bad option, I would say. Uh, we have done it before, and uh, it would be a bit more. Open any kind of uh, readings. So uh, that is what you can expect uh, for these uh, 14 uh, weeks. And uh, uh, books, I think uh, there is a certain amount of uh, books available. Uh, you can actually uh, look up for all these books, but I think uh, again, uh, just like uh, I've mentioned to you, that if you keep to my lecture notes, all the 14 weeks there will be a, a proper lecture lecture notes. You keep to the uh, lecture notes and then you do your exercises, you do your assignments and uh, your project paper. I think uh, you will be in a very good shape, basically. Uh, the problem starts is uh, when you start missing the classes and you don't uh, respond to the uh, assignments or exercises. Otherwise, uh, everything, uh, what is given in the class, what is discussed in the class, uh, that is important and will appear in your evaluation. Now, more importantly is that uh, although I say that my, uh, all my notes are complete, but there are things that uh, we are going to discuss in the class which is not available in the notes. That is going to be a general knowledge, and uh, that will be benefited uh, for those who actually attend the classes. So uh, you need to attend both because information is not only from the notes, but also from our discussion and our uh, presentations. Uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, we are probably ready to, to start uh, our first uh, chapter and uh, let us see how uh, this whole semester is going to uh, come. Thank you.